Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Remote Job Festival 2020. Um, this is the amazing uh, Big Bang session. I'm actually ex extremely excited to, to kick this off today. Uh, we've, been, uh, we've been really working hard on this, uh, and, and today we have the opportunity to present you really what we're working on. So today, uh, we have the honor to be uh, hosting this session with uh, Kun Park, so they have Kun Park, uh, president, Vice President of uh, National Innovation Association of Thailand. Uh, we also have uh, Jared, Kun Jared, who is the CEO of uh, Fast Walk. Hey, so you have Kun Jared. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much to be here. Um, and Hi. we have uh, Martin, CEO of uh, Walkmate here. How are you, man? Hey, guys. Good. Okay, so um, this is a, an amazing panel. I'll tell you why. Because uh, it's probably the first time uh, in the history of COVID-19, which is a recent history, uh, but uh, which have a really big impact, um, that we have the three biggest uh, platform uh, actually, two biggest at least, Walkmate and uh, Fast Walk, uh, the two biggest platform of recruitment, uh, Walkmate taking care of the blue colors, which uh, you know represents a big part of the Thai uh, nationals uh, workers, and the big part of the freelancers represented by Jared here and Fast Walk, together joining forces. And why uh, are these platform joining forces? Uh, is because with GetLinks, we feel that there is something wrong. Um, from, from our understanding, the Ministry of Commerce have recently said that um, more than 7 million Thais uh, nationals have lost uh, their employment during the past six weeks due to the consequences of COVID-19. And as us being a recruitment platform, technology driven, we felt like we had to do something. Uh, and thanks to you know, the initiatives of the government, uh, the Thai government have been doing many, many different things. And for us in the private sector, we felt like we have to do something as well. And this is where today we come together to create this remote job festival. Uh, you have no idea what it is yet. Uh, and we're going to have uh, the time in the next 45 minutes to go through it, to share what is it about, why we're doing this, what motivates us, and, and how good it's going to be uh, to support these unemployed people. So today uh, we have these amazing people. I will start with a, a question uh, and we go through that um, starting for uh, the government perspective first. So Kunpak, uh, maybe tell us a little bit of, you know, where do you see the employment landscape uh, in the country since COVID and, um, and, and where do you see the market have been uh, in Thailand? Uh, and the, the number of people that have been impacted uh, and maybe a little bit of, of what the government is doing now uh, to support those people that I need. Uh, because uh, National Innovation Agencies or NAA is under a newly established uh, ministries, uh, with very long names, uh, our ministries, uh, our new ministries called Ministries of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovations meaning that uh, we are governed uh, the higher education or universities for all over the countries, uh, both private and public uh, universities. And at the same time, this includes uh, universities, research facilities, uh, research technology organizations, and uh, funding agencies for the whole system. Uh, in the sense, uh, the, the, the COVID-19 incidents and also uh, prior incidents we already uh, faced economic uh, turbulence, I would say. Uh, before COVID-19, Thailand's already uh, experienced uh, very, very difficult times on economic development and economic growth. So we uh, foresee that there are quite a few uh, numbers of the university students. Uh, we are approaching around 400,000 university students that they are going to graduate from the universities that will face a very difficult uh, uh, difficulties on finding their own new jobs. They would right. say the first, the first jobs are uh, uh, the new job seekers. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, this is the, the, the prime uh, groups that uh, we are uh, looking for to, to support them. The second one since uh, NAA uh, is the secretariat of the National Startup Committees. 
uh, at this moment we are uh, joint hand with around uh, 13 or 16 uh, startup association, including Federation of Thai Industries and also Thai Chamber of Commerce on how to help your startup, particularly on the early stage startup and also a growth stage startup to uh, survive uh, within the next uh, quarter or the two quarters, meaning at the end of uh, this week, uh, we are going to launch uh, uh, financial support to them, uh, mainly on loan, zero, zero, zero interest loan. Uh, we are joint hand with the government saving bank to uh, create this kind of so-called uh, emergency loan for them. But before that, uh, we already support uh, around uh, 2 million US dollars on COVID incidents. Uh, around 40 each uh, startup already engaged with uh, 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 COVID uh, fighting mainly through uh, telemedicine, telehealth, and also uh, so-called uh, work from home uh, service and also the, the implication. This is amazing. That, yeah, it seems that uh, it's a bit difficult uh, for us to, to support so-called an individual uh, startup employee directly but we have quite a few number of indirect uh, support, both financial and also technical. That's great. This is great. And this is really because of that landscape that we felt that we really had to do something, right? Um, I, think, I, think, I think what you're, you're saying is really putting back into the context. Uh, because for many of us, we don't really see these things. We don't really fit because we still have Grab that deliver our food at night and we still have Netflix. So the quarantine was quite, you know, quite nice for us, right? But, uh, but we heard that some people are actually committing suicide right now in Bangkok. Uh, some taxi drivers and some poor people who didn't have a chance to, to face really uh, uh, and, and, to, and, to, and to take the life back after losing their, their job in a restaurant and others. Um, and on the other side, I think the World Bank have mentioned that um, I think 67% of the Thai population is still connected with uh, with uh, factory work uh, and other blue collar works that are highly um, in risk for, of automation. Uh, so as you mentioned, it's true that even though before the COVID happened, we already had some kind of measure that the government were working on to protect the Thai national to be having a career next decade. Right. So, so this is this is just being something that is already happening. Right. The, as you mentioned, the university students need to be better prepared for the market. Right. And to be better literate uh, in digital uh, skills, which we call uh, digital literacy. Right. And I think you're going to tell us about many of these initiatives that you guys are preparing, and it's going to be really cool. But uh, but we've heard this thing that 72 percent of the Thai uh, students. Uh, will be graduating and not be able to find a job because they're not really prepared for that market uh, at this era of digital transformation. So today the COVID uh, is really just accelerating something that we're already there. Uh, and this is where I believe this is our job for platforms uh, that are trying to innovate in the recruitment industry to be taking a part of it and supporting those millions of people towards that. So if you mind, um, I, I will be sharing uh, the highlight of Remote Job Festival uh, that we've been co-designing and, uh, and then we will get the mic more to Jared and to Martin to share about what's, uh, what's their take on this one, okay? So I will be, um, I will be sharing this small presentation uh, and you, you're going to see um, actually no presentation. <laughs> Okay, uh, maybe, maybe what we do is uh, we go and we talk about um, the reason why, Jared, uh, you think that it was a great campaign to join from your side. Oh, remote job fest, right? Yeah, I think um, definitely as you, you guys pointed out, uh, COVID-19 is definitely a human tragedy and causing a lot of problems in the economy and due to Thai people, right? I think it's definitely uh, we, we want to be a part of a good cause, such as the you know, job fest to get jobs for these people who are unfortunately and laid off without it being their fault, right? And another thing is also I think we want to, you know, as you guys and also Fast Work are the leaders in the HR space, as leaders, I think in, term, in times of crisis, right, people would look 
to the leader on what to do. And I think we should do our part as leaders in the HR space to guide these people through these hard times. So I think, yeah, being a part of a good cause and also working with other leaders in the space is why we're here. And I hope, I think we can help a lot of these people with what we have. That's amazing. Thank you, Jared. Um, and yes, we're going to talk more about freelancers and, and how you are really doing an incredible job to, to help those people who, who work from home to find a new income online through freelancing. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, maybe, uh, Martin, you want to share your view, your view on the landscape and, and how it's been uh, for, for your company to support that one? Yeah, I can do that as well. Um, I think what we've seen is that obviously the workers been hit, right? So we had a we had a very uh, we had an early discussion around this uh, a few weeks back, right, Dylan, where we discussed how we could potentially help the workers. I think for us it's been yeah. it's been a matter of helping actually both sides. So obviously we're a marketplace where it's important for us that we help the poorest people. The poorest people are always the one getting hurt the most, right? This is what we see in Thailand, and it's especially also the numbers that we're seeing coming in from us at the moment right the poorest people are always the one impacted the most um on our side furthermore all the small smes the small smes in thailand they are also impacted very often small smes here it's you know private companies with maybe one or two staff they're also being impacted heavily by this so the campaign or the initiative we have had in mind was basically trying to see once though that SME market get back on track whenever COVID hopefully uh, hopefully is over. We want to see if we can help them get access, access to a flexible workforce and at the same time see if we can find jobs for the unemployed, uh, for the unemployed workers. Uh, specifically, the shift that we've seen is obviously that certain industry has more or less completely closed down over the last uh, four to six weeks. Um, you mentioned uh, F&B. Obviously, that's very badly hurt. We've seen heard about a lot of workers basically traveling back home. Um, they can't even afford to stay in Bangkok anymore, so they're going back to their hometowns. Uh, but, but other industries, manufacturing especially, has also been impacted. Uh, there's a few industries that is, that is sort of taken off during these times. You mentioned it uh, yourself, Joanne, right? So you're ordering your food from Grab, right? So there's a few businesses that is, uh, that is having uh, good times. And I think our job is to see if we can canalize some of the uh, uh, some of the workers that's being uh, fired in certain industries and see if we can find jobs for them in other industries. Sometimes they, they, it's directly ap applicable, right? So they can just sort of be transferred because their skills are the right. Sometimes we need to upgrade them. We need to train them. We need to, you know, um, give them the, the right direction in terms of uh, making sure they have a future moving forward. Uh, so, so that's kind of like the things that we're seeing at the moment. Great. So, so to put things in perspective, Workmates today is, is helping a um, few thousand uh, people uh, in the blue collar industry, being drivers, being customer service, being data entry people, uh, to continue having an income uh, by working from home uh, or working for these companies that are enabling us uh, to survive right now, right? So you work with Foodpanda, you work with Grab, you work with e-commerce companies. Um, so, so this is really why I think it makes sense for, for you to be part of this. So, so before we get into some, some questions, I just wanted to share a one two minute highlight about Remote Job Festival. Uh, this is a one month long campaign uh, that we have been kicking off on the 1st of May, which is the Labor Day. Uh, and we're aiming through that to have a, a social campaign. Uh, there's no money involved for our side. GetLinks is not making money. Fast Work and Workmen are not making money for that. The goal is really to support uh, ties with uh, income opportunities during the hard time uh, and hopefully to be uh, social distancing proof uh, job opportunities which I call work from home or remote. So uh, Getlinks, uh, Fast Work and, and, uh, and uh, Workmate are proud to be Thai um, and, and this is really our way uh, to bring back uh, support uh, and also I believe strongly that this is during the hard time that uh, you can see leadership uh, emerge right uh, in the dark times you see um, the leaders uh, to take action right and and I, I see many companies are thinking oh this is really something bad happening and I think this is a, a leadership effort that we all have to take so again thank you for all to join uh, and this is the exciting things that we're gonna see next coming weeks we're gathering up more than 10,000 jobs uh, into this platform so combining the forces the clients of uh, GetLinks with uh, fast work and work made together, 
uh, we will be creating 10,000 remote uh, work from home friendly uh, income opportunities. Uh, and we're pushing that uh, onto uh, hopefully at least 100,000 job seekers. Uh, GetLinks database alone is 1 million people. So we hope that this uh, being ha having better awareness uh, of what uh, is out there in the market, but also maybe having jobs uh, uh, and, and being recruited uh, in work from home. We're gathering up more than 100 companies uh, and between 20 to 30 speakers uh, for this uh, conference to drive awareness um, on this work from home opportunity. Because what we can see is work from home is really the only way uh, people who got fired uh, can quickly make an income today. There is thousands of jobs that really require just a phone to be able to be made uh, because today we work in a technology driven economy anyway. Uh, and so some jobs can be quickly learned uh, through this computer and phone without having a degree really. Um, how it's gonna work is in a couple of days, we'll be releasing a platform which is called the Remote Job City. This platform is amazing, it looks like a city uh, and that will be gathering uh, hundreds of the companies that are being uh, joining um, the, the campaign and candidates will be able to see, interact directly with the recruiters of these companies on that platform. Uh, and again, it's completely free as well. Um, GetLinks Workmates uh, com combined uh, efforts by giving free access to any recruitment uh, during uh, the month of May uh, for any hires being made. Uh, and on the top of that, we'll have every day or every two days having a company doing introduction um, and, and that's also free for the companies uh, to do that uh, in front of this audience. Um, so that's pretty much the efforts that we are doing as recruitment companies uh, because this is our call. But now there is many other companies who can participate. So today I invite um, services company or maybe other products companies who want to give away voucher discounts or their product for free or for discount price to the talents to be to be um, to be able to access these um, into our platform with this voucher as well uh, so that people can access to it and I think that will help uh, these talents. So that's pretty much it uh, for the remote job fest but now I want to really get to talk a bit about for each of you in your own sector how do you see these have been impacted so far and where do you see hope because hope is what I want to drive with this festival. I want to drive 7 million people to have hope that even, they, if they, even if they lost their job in a restaurant, there is actually a future for them still. There's a future for them in this new digital economy through work from home, through remote job, through upskilling. So, so where do you see the chances have been made maybe for your first third uh, in the freelancing uh, economy? And then where do you see the hope for the future? Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk with, uh, with uh, Kunpak as well, because I know you have many things in the pipeline and with you, Martin. Yes, thanks, DJ. Um, so let me talk a bit first about um, how I see the future work going with COVID, right? I think definitely the trend is largely positive. I think that now with the growth in remote work, right, we see a lot more freelancers actually applying um, to the platform at least 50% increase over the pre-COVID period. Wow, that's huge. Um, yeah, I think, I think definitely a lot of people want to freelance and the trend will be both in the short term and in the long term. I think in the near term, right, definitely unemployment and the, the cash position that force companies to you know, be creative in how they manage their costs and also spend um, on the expenses will push them towards um, freelancing as well. In the long term, I think that once people are used to remote work, right, they're gonna be addicted to the um, benefits of it. And the good thing about uh, remote work and freelancing is that they are pretty similar. Actually, if you look at how you hire freelancers before, right, it's, you know, you hire online, um, jobs are, pretty well defined, um, pretty well documented on the, on the um, platforms and, and standardized. So these components are the trends we see that regular 
jobs before are becoming are moving into this um, having more of this characteristic with remote work because if you work remotely you got to make sure you know your process and systems are pretty um, documented standard standardized and measured as well so I see that the change in behavior of people who are used to doing remote work both in terms of the freelancers I mean in terms of the workers and also in terms of the companies it's, it's easier for them afterwards to transition to outsourcing or hiring freelancers. I think this is uh, what I see is the trend in going forward. Um, and, and that's a good thing. And I think because uh, people are going to be, especially companies are going to be hiring you know, people remotely, right? I think the benefit is also similar to when people start outsourcing before. So companies are able to hire people outside of their work area. So this opened them up to a, a lot of new um, talent pool, right? And that's good news for the talents. So the talents and people who lost their jobs recently, they, they will be approached by companies who are wanting to hire them from outside of their areas. And they will have more opportunity to you know, work with companies that are before not possible because you know they're not in the same country, not in the same city. But I think when the industry is used to remote work, the good thing for most people, employees, I mean, is that they will be able to work with companies anywhere. And I think I think that's a positive trend for for people who lose their jobs right now. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think as you as you said, right? Um, I think your report from Accenture were mentioning that by twenty twenty actually by 2020, uh, which we're in this year now, <laughs> the report was from 2018 or something. Uh, they were saying that more than 40% of the US workforce were already becoming freelancers. So this year, more, without the COVID-19 in the US, this is the case. Uh, and in economies, uh, which are emerging markets like Thailand, of course, you know, we can consider having a lot of this um, and maybe beyond that already, because there is all this gray economy, right? Uh, all these uh, freelancers, shops that are basically auto entrepreneurs uh, that are selling on the streets or that are having those, those micro businesses. So I think Thailand is, is, uh, is already very uh, micro freelanced already on the offline way. Uh, I think we can see how quickly Grab and, and Gojek have been taking off. Uh, from these, right, alongside with companies like Lazada, etc., who have those people who are just, you know, one Facebook shop, um, you know, selling online, and and those people also doing micro services. Um, so I think I think I think it's just it just makes sense to have more and more of these freelance opportunities uh, and these freelance talents to grow in the country. No, there is one defining thing, uh, and this is maybe where Kun Pak Kun Kul Kul. Uh, put some lights on and some shades around this, uh, is that, yeah, there is plenty of opportunities out there. There is hundreds of thousands of restaurants to be advised on how to sell on Food Panda, on how to have a website, uh, but not enough people have the skill sets, right? And this is where, this is only by working hands in hands between the government and the private sector and the education systems that we're gonna be able to help those people to approach these skill sets, right? These digital skill sets. So maybe, Kunpak, teach us. Uh, teach us where we are uh, and, and what's to come uh, in, in time and towards that. You're on mute, Kunpak. If, if you believe in uh, percentage and numbers of gray or shadow economy in Thailand, you will be surprised. Uh, because in Thailand, shadow economy is among the biggest in Southeast Asia. We are talking oh. about more than half of the GDP ratios belongs to shadow economies. Wow. Meaning that a lot of people work in uh, sort of, uh, uh, land lives of gray or shadow economy. In, in that sense, uh, I think this, this combined between uh, the three specific job description, uh, the skilled the skill laborers, both a blue collar and also freelancers, and also people that's working in a, a very specific area like coders or scientists or so-called professional jobs. 
and also the, the third one, uh, which is a so-called uh, a bus, another buzzword, uh, uh, a job for the future. Which is, I'm not sure what what really means job for the future because at this moment we are talking about the current situation. But in the sense, you can see that uh, there are only two scenario at this moment. First, how to keep the current jobs, right? Uh, SME and also startup need to keep their employees uh, intact as long as they could. And at the same time, the, the second one, what about the new job seekers? Uh, let, let's, let's talk about the first one, uh, the current job seekers. Uh, we are talking about run, free skill, and uh, uh, unlearning skill and also uh, so-called uh, new skill. That's why we call run, right? This kind of things uh, before the economic crisis and also COVID-19, a lot of uh, governmental agencies talking about how we can leverage the, the skill set, a new skill set, not only digital, but also a new new set of services. Right. Don't forget that around, around I think, 53 to 57% of Thai GDPs belong to service sectors, and mainly this is hospitalities and mice. At this moment, uh, you can see that ho all hotel already closed, and at the same time, uh, aviation industry as well. That's why the government procurement and government jobs come into place. Uh, we are talking about uh, creating uh, temporary jobs for those who are working as a vendor for the government agencies. Right. Uh, last month, uh, Ministry of uh, Public Health uh, just announced a new job for healthcare. We are talking about forty thousand new jobs for healthcare. Wow! Uh, and at the same time, uh, at this moment, uh, we are talking about uh, the, the last mile uh, uh, attempt. Don't forget that digitalization cannot reach some group of people, a group of people like the age population uh, right. or handicapped. So we need. Uh, digitized helper, right? Uh, people that's working as a civic tech uh, companies or social enterprise that working along the side with digitized company that can help the helper to help the vulnerable people. This is very important. Another another scenario is that a lot of people already uh, experienced uh, a big migration on economic last month when the government uh, start to lock down the whole nation. A lot of people already left uh, Eastern Seaboard and also Bangkok. We are talking about at least 4 million people already returned wow. home. Uh, I believe that uh, more than uh, half, maybe uh, 1.5 to 2 million people, they will no longer uh, need to return to Bangkok or EC after the crisis. In that sense, local economies come into play, even digitized or non-digitized. People that's already decided to leave uh, their, their own uh, workplace and return home. Uh, we do not want to see another big economic migration back to okay. the cities. Uh, so in that sense, uh, this is another possibility is that government already think about how to create a jobs and also the opportunities in the local economy. Let's talk uh, about the, the newcomer in the job market. Uh, this is very difficult. Uh, situation for them. I believe uh, to teach them how to be entrepreneur, how to be uh, the entrepreneur since they are still in, in the campus. Uh, the government uh, already put a lot of money. At this moment, we have around uh, uh, half a billion baht uh, fund for the student that's uh, still uh, uh, study in the university that they would like to turn themselves to be entrepreneur. They can receive up to 1.5 or 3 million baht to create their own business. And that will create another new employment. Uh, the government from uh, our ministries, we already announced 10,000 jobs for the people who work, would like to work with the university, but it's temporary. We are talking about three months and six months, but at, at least we can prolong it. Uh, so this kind of thing, I, I would say that this is uh, the mix up between short and medium terms scenario that we would like to maintain the current job market and also create another new opportunities. If you remember the uh, hamburger crisis last time, uh, almost 10 years ago, uh, they create a lot of new uh, establishment and new business opportunities. And later, later only one year, 
let's create another big companies or unicorn. That should be another case. Right. And this is why we wanted to call this event, this campaign, the Remote Job Festival, because to us, we are entering a new economy. It is beyond COVID. It is beyond just work from home. This is remote. Remote means also all these people that are coming back to their city outside of Bangkok and who probably won't be coming back in Bangkok after that. But that will dynamize uh, the local economies and hopefully create more opportunities, more entrepreneurs there as well as more digitalization back into the provinces, right? Um, and what we said, Muban, uh, could, could be really uh, become a satellite of, of all these digital transformation as well. What we can see globally, and as from the International Labour Organization, is most of the jobs um, are actually moving back into the locations uh, from the capital back to the sub-capital and the third um, locations. And I think this is uh, a new economy that's going to emerge. Uh, and for the people who will be ad able to adapt the fastest, they will be able to take this as an opportunity. And as you mentioned, from there, we will see mega corporation and probably unicorn to be able to rise uh, from this crisis, right? So it's all about adapting. Uh, it's all about for individuals having the ability to learn those new skill sets and learn to work remotely to keep a during the crisis and for companies and organizations, it's, it's the capability of social distancing, right? Through software uh, engineering, but also robotization. And this is really where we're gonna start to see the impact of the digital transformation we together have been talking about for so long, right? Getlinks have been uh, co-helping co for uh, this uh, startup ecosystem for the last uh, five years, I think. Startup Thailand have been one of these great opportunities alongside with Digital Big Bang to show to the masses uh, of what is going to happen, right? So, so I think we're just seeing that accelerating. Uh, and I'd like, to, I'd like to ask you, how do you see that remote economy being shaped for you, Martin? Because you are at the heart of this, right? Um, for us with GetLinks, we work with the technology companies, e-commerce, etc on the software engineering product, AI uh, type of jobs, but you work with the real people who are really doing the work, right? Those grab drivers, those customer service people. So how have you seen this evolve, right? And how do you think this gonna accelerate this, and this movement towards the remote economy? For example, for Grab or for Food Panda, how, how is this really taking shape? Um, I, think, I think it's important that uh, sometimes the positive side effects of crises is, is that things will uh, sometimes uh, happen much faster uh, or people start to think out of the box uh, much more when you're in a, in a crisis, right? So I know for a fact that uh, many of our clients, and I think for you as well, Joan, right, uh, they have been a little bit reluctant to the uh, advantage of using technology and, for, uh, and to remote, uh, accepting remote workforce, right? Um, right now, they're forced into accepting the conditions simply because we got to reduce the spread of the virus, right? So I think um, I think we're we're seeing that companies are are eager to test it out for a start. Something that was hard for us to push uh, early on, um, and we have actually also seen over the last four to six weeks that that performance and efficiencies they are not necessarily dropping just because people are working from home. I think the latter, if we can prove that over a longer period. That is what will make the impact moving forward. Because once the market opens up again, if we over a period of time, let's say over the next couple of months, can prove that it's no longer needed to be sitting in 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 a in an office space together with the rest of your of your coworkers, then why would anyone continue to work that way? There's a lot of cost related to the, to it uh, from a company perspective, but from a worker you, uh, individual worker perspective. The amount of hours that you spent in, in MRT or BTS or in your car driving every day, uh, taking 25, 30% of the low salary income just for transportation costs, it's simply not worth it. So this is, um, I mean, it will be a win-win both from a worker and, 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 uh, and a company perspective. Um, I think it's still too early for us to say whether, uh, whether this trend is going to you know, 
pick up with the same speed after the the, the COVID uh, takes off um, or after the COVID uh, normalizes or is, is, is gone in the market. But we're definitely seeing the interest from 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 not only tech companies but from anyone who wants to see whether they can outsource uh, part of the lower tier workforce. Uh, call center position is is a brilliant example as well. Yes. Yeah, thank you for that. And, and I think it's amazing because when you think about it, I could be working as a customer service person from anywhere in the world, right? And I think Philippines as a country have been doing remote work uh, and, and taking probably 20% of their GDP from these remote workers, right, for a long time. So it's just about shaking those companies to adapt, right, and create those processes. But then that's freedom because that's enabling people from Philippines to be able to take jobs that usually would be in the US as two or three times more expensive in terms of the salary uh, than Philippines. And that's have been a huge opportunity for the Filipino market, right? I think we have seen the same type of uh, market arbitrage in Vietnam for the last 20 years, where Vietnamese companies have been outsourcing European and US uh, software development uh, just because, you know, they could get more money by working with these U.S. companies and European companies than on the local market. And I think this is really where we want to educate talents with this remote uh, job fest in Thailand in 2020. We want to make Thai people realize that through fast work and through this partnership we are creating together with GetLinks and with Workmate, there is plenty of opportunities of working from home uh, that doesn't require a bachelor degree, that doesn't require to have done Chula Long Court University or to have the four grades, that just require to have a computer and the motivation to make an income. Uh, and if we can really do our part as recruitment platform to put this opportunity online and to make it very, very seamless for tenants to access to this, I think we will have done our part. And I hope, I think this will materialize to creating millions of income uh, for those people. So, so this, is, this is the first part. And the second part is really what you mentioned about these, these companies to adapt, right? And, uh, and when, when we think about this, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, just, it just makes so much sense to work remotely, right? Uh, I was talking with the CEO of Mercedes three days ago. And he was telling me that he was like this look at this office and he was thinking like this is fixed cost <laughs> right? and and he was thinking how can i optimize those fixed costs to be actually generating something more than just hour of work right and this is through creativity uh, that he found the solution uh, to do that right so so the companies who are able to get rid of offices by default, we'll reduce their OPEX per month and we'll have more capital to invest in research and development, marketing, and take more market shares than their competitors. So this is no so clear that the companies who are adapting the fastest to this new remote work economy will be the winner of tomorrow. Now, I think this is really what this event is about. It's about shaking uh, the market to make them realize that number one, with a little bit of optimism, we have 10,000 jobs opportunity, and hopefully we can create a movement from these 100 companies that will join us from this event to inspire 1,000 companies who will adopt the remote work and provide remote work opportunities for the decades ahead, for ties and beyond. That's number one. This is the optimism that yes, there is a future for Thai people uh, who lost their job. Yes, there will be work opportunities, and yes, it will be social distancing. So with or without COVID, we can guarantee that people will make an income by working remotely. And the second message is to be adaptive because COVID is just maybe one of the big waves that we've faced. And uh, it's, for, it's maybe one of the biggest change in our lives, in our lifestyle, in how we walk, in how we live. But it's made me, it might not be the last one that will happen. And I think Kunpak, You've mentioned it. With or without COVID, we were about to see a massive digital disruption to happen to many of these jobs anyway. And this is our responsibility as private sectors, alongside with the government entities and the public to work together 
to prepare the nation to be able to be digital literate and have the chance to be part of this new economy. So by co-creating this event together, I think Gatling's Fast Walk uh, and Walkmate alongside with the government and hundreds of other companies uh, that are joining like Grab, Lazada, uh, but also normal uh, companies that are maybe not Grab, but that are participating to create these work from home opportunities. We are saying that we believe there is an optimistic future ahead. We believe there is an inclusive future for these people to be part of this new economy. And we want to be the gateway for that. Inclusion, optimism, as an adaptivity are the three keywords that we want to put in everyone's mind. Uh, we're going to put them in English, but we're also going to put them in Thai uh, and maybe in Chinese, in French, in every language that we can, because this movement is not just in Thailand. This is the movement that the International Labour uh, Organization, alongside with the World Economic Forum, have been started with the 1st of May in the Labour Day. And I think this is going to go ahead and help uh, beyond this month of May. Thank you so much for taking the chance of establish new leadership uh, and caring uh, for these millions of people who lost opportunities. Uh, thank you so much for creating this wave and being the first one to believe in it. Now let's share that among our friends, amongst our clients, amongst our families, um, and let's make all these people to participate to create this remote work economy together. Thank you.